Hello, welcome to chapter 1 for Foundations of Math 11. This is inductive and deductive reasoning. I will go over the notes that are located on your course page for chapter 1. Um, it's a good idea to read through them, but I thought it might be a good idea just to go through them with you. The first bit is just kind of explaining what you'll be covering in this chapter. You don't really need to know it other than the fact that this is what you'll be covering. The next part goes on to inductive reasoning. The summary of inductive reasoning, I'm not going to read through everything, is basically that you're doing conjectures and counterexamples. Conjectures are kind of um, outcomes that you have based on certain examples. So, for instance, you would say, I think I have some examples there for conjectures. Um, in order to, for a conjecture or postulate to become a theorem, it must be proven. But conjectures can be true, false, or partly true, or partly false. These are just mostly based on examples. Based on examples. So conjectures are not true, they're not, they can be true, but they have to be proven to be true um, using deductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is usually just based on some examples that you can show, um, and based on some conjectures you might say, oh I think that, you know, if, when I add two even numbers together it's always going to be an even number. Things like that, that's a conjecture. Counterexamples. I think are pretty self-explanatory. It's basically providing something that's a counterexample. Like for instance, if a conjecture says everyone in my family has a big nose, the evidence is me, my parents, my grandparents, my children, and there's a whole bunch of people that have big noses. Ah, but the counterexample, but my niece, Zelda, has a little nose. Therefore, the conjecture that everybody in my family has a big nose is false. And that's just based on one counterexample. Next we look at deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is very formal mathematical proofs. So um, it's important to prove it mathematically, usually using algebra, not just a few examples. So here they have an example. The conjecture is the sum of any two odd or any two even integers is itself even. So then he starts off with given. Let me, let's just have x and y be two integers. So x and y are any integers. Then he has 2x and 2y. If you multiply a number by 2, it's automatically even. Next, if you multiply by, yeah, and he says right there, multiply by 2 is always an even integer. If you add 1 to an even number, it becomes odd. So he just says 2x plus 1 and 2y plus 1, odd. Then he says the sum of 2x and 2y is 2x plus 2y. Or, this is a big thing, factoring out of 2. So you factor out the value of 2, and therefore if you multiply, and remember anything that you multiply by 2 is always going to be even. That's just kind of assumed to be true. And it is true. This must be even since it has a factor of 2, like I said. The sum of 2x plus 1 and 2y plus 1 is, so we add them together, the 1's at the end can add together to 2, and therefore everything again, everything has a factor of 2. That has a 2x, a 2y, and a 2. So you can factor out the 2 out of the beginning to make sure that you have a 2 times some value. And remember that 2 times some value is just even. I'll work through one more just to show you exactly how this works. So from your homework, you have a question that's very similar to this for deductive re reasoning. I'm going to prove that the product of two consecutive numbers is always even. So let's see. Let's say let x be one number. And if they're consec consecutive numbers, it would be the number right after one x. So the x plus one be the other. And most of the time we're dealing with, with integers. Integers do not include decimals. So we're going to prove that this works for every integer. Next thing I say, Oh, I see product. Product means multiplication. So therefore, I'm going to have to multiply these two values. So I have x. The product is going to be x times x plus 1. That's the product of those two values. So your algebra skills have to be pretty good in order for you to complete this. If I multiply this out, I get x squared plus x. And x would happen to be 
a common factor between both of these. So if x is my common factor, I'm multiplying it by x plus 1, which is where I kind of started with. Now if you notice, either this is even or this is even. If that's even, then that one is odd. And therefore I have a number like 2 times whatever. So that proves that that value there is already even. If I have the other case where I have x and x plus 1 and I have say this is odd, that means the next number must be even. In which case the product, because I have an odd times an even, again that same thing where I have multiplying by 2, this is also even. So in both cases it doesn't matter if I have the x even or the inside even, both cases are going to be even because I'm multiplying them by an even number. You can look at examples if you want. And you could say, well, let's take 2 times 3. Well, that's 6. Let's take 4 times 5. That's 20. These are even. The products are even. But notice the values that I chose. 2 was an even number. 3 was not. 4 was an even number. 5 was not. Well, let's start off with a non-even number. What about 3? Well, the next one would be 4. Notice that 4 is an even number. Even numbers have factors of 2. Anything with a factor of 2 will result in an even number. So 3 times 4 is 12, which is also even. These examples help you to understand the concept, but this is the deductive mathematical proof on the side here. This is deductive reasoning. So you must provide a proof that shows that for any case, for any case, it's always going to work, and therefore you have to use algebra. And that is what is called deductive reasoning. Going back to the notes, um, that's kind of where they end off. He does talk about invalid proofs, and this is an example that I worked through. Examples of an invalid proof, most of the time, uh, I've seen, I think all the time in your textbook, they have this case where they start dividing by things. Oh, and look, they divide by an algebraic expression. The problem with dividing by algebraic expressions is you don't know what they are. The conclusion to this ends up being that 4 equals 3. How did they get to that conclusion? Well, they made the false assumption that a plus b minus c is a number. Well, what if it's 0? Which in this case, it is 0. You cannot divide by 0. So therefore, and I have the error uh, over here, I have the explanation. The error occurs when dividing by a plus b minus c. Because if it's 0, then we have a problem. Because dividing by 0 creates problems. And you can cr come up with these strange proofs by dividing by zero essentially. Alright, the last kind of section, the last two sections are using logic to solve problems. Again, they just kind of uh, stem off of conjectures and inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Right, and it has an example there that you can read through as well. These are good examples that um, explain exactly how this kind of logic works, which is really, really important. And the last section is 1.7, which is puzzles and games which again is kind of a fun way. I have two links there that you can work on. You can click on them for Sudoku um, and another one for another uh, puzzle as well. So it's kind of, the last section is kind of fun. It's not too bad. The hardest section I would say is the deductive proofs, which is section 1.4. So just make sure to re-watch the video if you get stuck on the deductive proof questions. And um, good luck, and thanks for starting the course.